Hey backers, Rylan here. Today we're going to be talking about the latest revision of the hardware and how we've got everything in the print head sort of consolidated together into a more finalized product. In the most recent version of our new hardware, we've changed quite a few things and all of the changes are improvements on the overall usability and functionality of the printer. One of the biggest things we've done is an idea that Eric thought of. He thought of a way to connect the parts in the printer in a way that's far more stable. Moving the laser onto the circuit of the Peachy printer made a lot of improvements to the design of the structure around the printer. It let us make it a lot more sturdy, it uh, made it a lot more compact, and uh, also for cutting them on the laser cutter it's a lot quicker to cut. The time to laser cut parts for one printer went from around five minutes to two and a half and uh, the amount of plastic was also reduced. It's less than a quarter square foot of plastic now. We also have a new dripper design. We've tested a lot of different drippers and in the last revision of the printer we had a dripper that was sealed and it took about 30 steps to build that dripper. So we wanted to simplify that and also make it a lot easier to clean and see a lot easier to see it operate. So I've come up with a new dripper that is one piece, it's cut with our laser cutter and it is uh, an absolute pleasure to use and there's very few steps in, uh, in getting it assembled. Another thing that we've improved is the valve and how you control the speed of the printer. In the last revision we controlled the speed of the drip rate by changing a valve and the valve was a little bit finicky and we found that it's actually easier to change the speed of the dripper if you just use the height of the siphon as the change in pressure. And so we basically eliminated the need for a valve that can control the speed of the dripper and that means that there isn't a small spot for uh, particles to clog up in a, in a valve that's controlling the speed. Instead we have some valves that are intended for just turning the printer on and off and those are cut with the laser cutter and they work great. And, uh, and the new dripper design that I was just talking about it slides up and down and controls the actual pressure going to the dripper. We've also made some improvements to the buildability of the printer. We have a few less parts to actually put together and the parts that uh, are still there we've improved uh, how easy it is to put together. There's uh, parts that we don't have to glue anymore, they're just friction fit and uh, it's definitely reduced the amount of time to build a printer. Previously, we've been instructing people to use glue to attach the thread for coming off of the mirror assembly. And that's not really ideal because the glue is so permanent. So what we've come up with is a mirror that's actually part of a loop of a rubber band. And now it's uh, a lot easier just to put the band onto the frame or take it off. So it makes repairing or trying different ideas uh, on the printer a lot easier. And so I'm really happy with that. We found with the thread that if we can get the tension on the frame very tight, it's a lot more resistant to outside vibrations. We've been on a long journey looking for first surface mirror that we can actually afford to put into the $100 kit. And up until a week or two ago, we hadn't found anything. But just recently, we actually found a supplier that will give us first surface mirror on polycarbonate plastic that we can definitely afford to put in the $100 kit. That means that the laser dot won't have any ghosting effects from having to go through a layer of plastic and then be reflected back through that same layer of plastic. And that should really improve the uh, smallest wall thickness that we can get and the consistency of the wall thickness at any deflection in the printer. I'll talk about this more in another update, but currently we're sending our lasers to Sweden to get them tested to see just how much wattage is actually coming out of the laser diode after a given size of aperture. And to do that, uh, we've sort of built a kit for them to test out all these different apertures. And Eric came up with a, a nice laser cut aperture design that just pops on and off of the front of the laser. I'm really happy with it and I think that it's something we should include in the kit so that it's easy for you to put the aperture on your printer as well. Finally, we have some great modifications to our magnetic dampening system that have improved it a lot. But there's a lot to talk about there so I'm going to leave that for another update. This is the hardware design that we're hoping to send to you. And we've tested all the ideas that are in the hardware design, but we haven't tested them as a consolidated device. So that's what we've got to do next. We've got to test 
the exact thing that we plan to send to you and make sure that it works as we expect. Either way, I'm really happy with the functionality of this printer and all the things that we've done to improve it, but it still has a long way to go in usability. Luckily, that's something we can improve upon mostly in software. So we'll be shipping you the printers and improving the usability with, in software as we go along. We are aware that our current estimated shipping dates are approaching quickly. And even if this testing goes smoothly, we still have to wait for the parts to arrive after ordering them. So it's likely that there'll be another small delay. We're trying to work as hard and as fast as we can to get this testing done so we can order the parts and start focusing on shipping. Thank you so much for your support backers. It's been an amazing journey so far and it's such an exciting time to be so close to our goal. So thanks again and we'll see you in the next update.